I always dreamt of making my own anime someday. In most animes today, every frame of animation is drawn, inked, coloured, and shaded by hand by a team of hundreds of artists. I love drawing, but that's a lot of work for one person, and I knew there had to be a more efficient way for a single person to create their own animations. I'm currently developing Project Feline, a 3D wall running game made in the style of anime. And over the past two weeks, I've been animating the game's protagonist, Gabriella. And in this episode, we're going to break down my animation process day by day to see how these animations were made and how you too can make your characters look and move like a hand-drawn Japanese animation. Let's get into it. Enter 3D. This seemed like the perfect tool set for someone like me to get into animation. I could model my characters in 3D and be able to see them from all sides without having to redraw them every other frame. Characters could be rigged with bones and animated in 3D space with all of the in-between frames added automatically. Now when I started this character I found it challenging to faithfully emulate the intentional hand-drawn look of the anime style and I knew it would take some magic to get it right. It's not a look I see faithfully emulated in 3D very often. For example, many consider shows like Ruby or movies like 2004's Appleseed to be 3D anime. It looks to me like these studios were indeed going for the anime look, but it comes off as distinctly 3D and artificial. But why? Computer generated imagery is mathematically perfect. Too perfect. And it's this perfection that breaks the illusion for us in many ways, namely the jittery shading on surfaces and the eerily smooth movement of characters. When an object is animated in 3D, the software will automatically interpolate the object's position between its starting point and its destination. This is what makes animating in 3D so easy, as we no longer need to worry about adding the in-between frames to get our object in motion. Traditional anime, however, is nowhere near as smooth as this. A video game on a modern PC runs at 60 frames per second. A movie is shot at 24 frames per second. An anime is animated at 24 frames per second on twos. This means that movement is only updated every other frame along the animation, resulting in an average of around 12 to 15 frames per second. While animating Gabriella, I used a technique known as limited animation, where all automatic interpolation done by the computer is removed, and the character's pose is updated manually every other frame, just like in traditional animation. Here is Gabriella animated at the standard 24 frames per second on ones. And here she is animated on twos. With this technique, I was able to produce all of Gabriella's in-game animations while faithfully emulating the iconic anime look. It took me about two weeks to create all of the animations needed, and I'd like to show you guys behind the scenes on how I made each animation from start to finish. Alright, so we're now in day one of the animation process. I spent the weekend working on a post sheet just to get an idea of what the character is going to look like when moving and a few things of a facial expression as well just to get an idea of how the character is going to react and, and behave because I want to make sure with these animations that a lot of them are really in character and reflect the personality of the character in the game. So I'm going to be building these animations based off some of these poses and I have about eight or so animations here. So I think we'll just start off with trying to do the idle first. So that seems like the easiest. I'm gonna just create some poses, some keyframes, and we'll see where we go. Alrighty, so it's been about two hours or so since I started animating. I've started off with just like an idle animation just to get a rough idea and pose of what that'll look like. I've just got some breathing going on there. Now again, still very rough drafts, nothing final yet. I also got a bit bored of doing the idle and I moved on to a few other ones. I have this walk that I have in progress, but here it is so far. Um, there's still a lot of things I got to fix with it. It's This was only about an hour of just positioning and posing things. So yeah, I think now I'm going to probably spend another two hours today working on it and then take a break. I was thinking to try doing one animation at a time, but I think I want to do it more like do all of the animations and incrementally improve them throughout the week. So I'm going to work on this a bit more and check back in soon. 
Alrighty, so it's been another two hours or so. We've got this nice little skate sort of animation going here. The keyframes are still very basic at the moment. I just have some blocking keys at the moment and it's just auto tweening between them all. I think I'm gonna leave those auto tweens in for now just so that it makes it easier to get those poses. One good thing to do is to get a lot of reference material if you can. So I've just been sitting here for the past like couple hours just watching this guy on uh, inline skates. And I've been trying to sort of match his poses. Um, and the cool thing about YouTube is if you press the comma and full stop keys, it can actually cycle between the frames. So I've just been pausing it on certain frames and trying to match this guy's pose. So I take like this pose for example, and as you can see the one I've got on screen here is quite similar to uh, this dude. So I'm gonna be signing off for the day and then tomorrow we'll get back on it and we'll start off some new animations and refine some stuff. But I mean, we'll see what happens. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, so I've spent about an hour doing this. I've made a start on like the jump pose and the jump loop. I thought it'd be best to start off with just a pose. If we hit play, I've got a bit of variation going on. I still got to work the tail in. Pretty happy with how the legs are for the moment, but I will like to offset these later so it looks a bit more natural. I know that there is some bits clipping. That actually does happen a lot in games. Even AAA titles have clipping in the mesh, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. I've got this other one too that I made up quickly, which was just going from the idle to the jump. And oh, it looks like I've deleted all the tail keyframes there by accident. <laughs> I have some set keyframes, just some empty ones here of when I want some things to happen. So at the second frame, like really immediately, I want her to start crouching down in anticipation for that jump, but I'll probably replace these with the proper poses later. But yeah, I'm gonna take a little break, getting a little tired. See you guys in a bit. All right, so we're coming up at around the end of the day and I've just been mainly touching up some things. Tomorrow I'll probably make a start on the wall running animations because I feel like to get those done right, it's gonna rely a lot on the standard run animation or the skate animation, because I'd like it to be very similar. So with refining this run, one thing I've been trying to pay close attention to is of course, the 12 principles of animation. I used to teach this stuff, so I've kind of got it drilled into my head of trying to implement these in. If we go here to the hips, you can see that there's this blue, which is the up and down, because I've tried to make it feel more bouncy instead of just a gradual shift. I think from the back, it's starting to look better than how it used to. It looks a lot less stiff. The spine still feels a bit too solid, so I'm gonna have to fix some things up there. The next thing I worked on uh, for a bit was mainly the idle animation, because I, I made a post on it on uh, Reddit and Twitter and all that, and I got some feedback on it, but now it's just a matter of making sure it, um, it feels nice and feels natural and that it's not breathing too fast. That was like a common thing I was getting was that, oh yeah, she looks like she's breathing a bit too quickly so I've been trying to alleviate that a bit so what I've done mainly again it's more curve stuff so as you can see the hips kind of bounce up and down now instead of drift I've also um, offset the hands and have those bounce a bit too having them out of sync with the hips definitely feels a lot more natural I didn't get that much sleep last night so I'm feeling a bit more tired than I did yesterday I didn't get through things as quickly but I think I'm getting some refining going on which is good so yeah, I may decide to do more work today. I may not. I think I might just take the evening off just to unwind and get myself to bed on time so I can go at it tomorrow. But if I do decide to work, I'll update you guys then. If not, I'll update you guys tomorrow. So I'll see you all later. Alrighty, so I'm about to get back into things, but I spent about an hour this morning just creating up a new walk cycle animation and refining some of the other animations. So in my walk at the moment, it's basically just like a less intense version of the skate or run animation. Now I have indeed updated my checklist a bit, so I've got a block outs checklist and the finalized checklist. After I get all these finished, I might chuck it into Unreal and test it just to make sure it all works. And then we'll get along to finalizing them all. We'll see how things go. But let's get back into the work. So I've got the jump loop going now and I have like the tail kind of moving in a circular kind of pattern. I also have made some progress with the jump, like the beginning of the jump animation going from the idle pose to the jump pose. And it's a very quick animation. So if I, uh, if I go through it frame by frame for you guys, we've got the idle pose. She then bends down at frame three and it's like this very exaggerated crouch and I might even go a bit further with this. And then the immediate next frame, it's very, very quick. I have it so that she's like starting to sort of push herself up in the air, but those are fully stretched and the legs are starting to stretch a bit as well. 
So after that, um, that pose, the next pose, she's now, uh, her feet have left the air and she's going into the jump pose. And for the idle animation itself, I've spent a considerable amount of time on that tail, making sure that it sways in a natural looking way. So I kind of have it going as sort of like a, a figure eight pattern. That's, that'll be probably it for the moment. I might do some more work later and show you guys then. Now I've got a bit more stuff going on in these animations. One thing I really want to show is the jump that I've got going on here. I've just got a test on the root bone so that it moves up and down so I get an idea of the actual movement on camera of how the character will jump. And this is the in-game camera view. So yeah, I've mainly just been focusing on that land, trying to get the sort of land animation going. And I've also made a start on trying to get the wall run pose and by golly, it is difficult. I've added some template walls here to kind of get an idea of where the wall surface is. And I've just literally copied the skate animation and tilted everything a bit. But yeah, this is definitely gonna need some work. As many people have pointed out, ever since the very, very first devlogs, people are always wanting the hand to be making contact with the wall. It will make contact with the wall, so hopefully that's a, that's a few wishes fulfilled there. It's just gonna be tricky to figure out how to do the legs and weights and all that, because, you know, physically this is impossible. You can't really skate on walls like this, but I wanna make it look as convincing as possible. But yeah, that's what it looks like in the gameplay view so far. That's what I've got for today. I don't wanna try and rush things too much. I think Monday was a really great day. I feel like I got a lot done but now I'm starting to feel like I'm slowing down a bit not sure why that is exactly I guess animation is just kind of tiring I'm a bit scared that I'm gonna burn out too soon but uh I think we'll get through it but yeah I'm gonna sign off for today and I'll report back soon so I've spent a bit of time this morning just refining more things. I've made some progress here on the run or skate animation. You could say I've tried to sort of make it look a bit better from the side and I've been doing things as well just with the hands and improving the timing of those a bit. If we go into the gameplay view that's roughly how it looks and I think it looks a lot better than it did before. I've been looking up more reference material of inline skating but trying to emulate the professional look to it so that Gabriella doesn't look like a complete amateur. So that's been pretty fun. I've also tried to make some efforts with a few other areas. I've been mainly trying to get this pose right for the for the wall ride and that's been really 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 tricky. Again it's extremely rough test here of how the legs might move because it's yeah I honestly don't know <laughs> how they should move at all. I'm just trying to get those poses sorted mainly. This is going to be a real challenge. Today I might take a little bit of a break from the animations and do some gameplay stuff. It's just a bit exhausting doing the same task for a long time so I want to mix it up a bit so check back soon. Alright, so I spent this afternoon doing a bit of testing. I thought, seeing as I had these animations, that I might as well give them a try in engine to make sure they all work before I continue working on them. So I've got the new model in. There's still a few bugs with it that I'm glad I noticed now, but I've got here the idle animation and I've got the got the skate animation in place as well. I've got the jump animations in. I've also added in the wall run animation as well. Unfortunately, it's only on one side. So if you try it from the other end, it'll just play the same clip. My brother just tested out for me to see what he thought and he liked what he saw. A few little areas I need to fix up, but I reckon this is looking way better than the current version of the prototype. And I feel like it's gonna really blow people's minds when it's implemented. Again, this is just to test it out. This isn't what it's gonna look like in the final thing. That'll be a whole video in itself where I import everything and show how I apply textures and whatnot. I do have this weird bug though with the idle that I'll try and show you guys. So you see my character there, but when I strike the idle pose, my eyes disappear. So that's a bit of an issue. Anyway, I'm gonna take some time off now. I'm gonna go watch like a movie or something and I'll catch you guys either tomorrow or on Sunday. spent some time today retuning and refining the animations a bit. I'm mainly taking into consideration some feedback I got on specifically the jump animations and bits on the wall ride animations. So I'll show you what those look like. For the jump, 
I mean, from a distance, it doesn't look all that different, but if you go through frame by frame, there are some differences. First of which being, I've like exaggerated the anticipation stage. I've tried to put her as close to the ground as I can without it looking too strange. I've also scaled the feet up a bit too. The actual feet will squish when she's crouching down. And I know it looks super weird. She's like super stretchy, like rubber. But when it's being played really quickly, especially when you've got it in the engine and you're jumping in game, it just feels better. It's a really hard thing to describe. When you're there playing it, you'll just feel it. So anyway, there's our jump. I also did some work on the land. So I've tried to scale up the feet as she's landing here and bring her down even more and stretch those arms in the air. It looks a bit awkward, but I think it's gonna be so quick that people won't really notice. Next thing we've got is the skate animation. I've done a bit more work on that and I kind of wish I made a backup. I kind of like the previous one, but from the side, it looked really awkward. So I think now it's starting to look a bit better from the side. And then I've been doing some work on the wall ride too. I did get some feedback. People said it looked a bit too stiff. So I've got this arm on the other side now moving back and forth. It might add some more dynamics to that animation because this is going to be one that players look at a lot. So I think the more moving pieces, the better. And another quick thing I've done because I had a lot of people tell me that the jump looked too symmetrical. And there's actually a name for that in animation. I believe it's called twinning and it just completely ruins the illusion. So I've gone in and tried to offset more between the left and right sides. So I'm hoping that kind of brings more asymmetry to it and makes it look a bit more appealing. Um, it's just fine tuning and I, I'm feeling good about where I'm at at the moment. I think I've got most of the heavy lifting done. It's just polishing mainly. That's gonna be it for today. Uh, I'll now be back tomorrow doing some more work on this and uh, we'll see how things go. So what I've gone ahead and done here is I've re-imported all the animations back into the engine just to sort of play around and test them. I think there's a lot I'm doing right there, but there's still a few things I need to fix up. Looking at it in engine and playing it definitely helps me get a better grasp on what I need to be doing next. It's sort of easy to get lost in it all and pigeonhole and certain things. And they look really smooth at the moment. And that's because I haven't done anything to them yet. But once I have it all finished, I want to try and intentionally limit the frame rate on these animations. So it looks really traditional. I've got a controller here I'm testing it on and if I like tilt the controller slightly I've got that walk animation playing or that sort of slow skate animation and I've just been seeing how that feels and I've also done a thing where if I tilt it a bit more it speeds up and then goes into the long stride so that'll be it for now and I'll check back with all you guys tomorrow. Did some more animation work this morning and I want to show you guys what I have so far. I've done some more changes to the wall ride pose. First of which being the hand placement. A lot of people said that previously it looked a bit weird. So I thought I might move it back a bit along the character to make it look like it's kind of gliding alongside the wall rather than sticking to it like that. So I flipped the hand around to this side now and I think it looks a lot better. And I've got a bit of movement going on there too. And I've also got the tail wagging around as well. I've tried to make it look like the wind is blowing through it. So I've made it a bit quick. I then made to start on the wall jump animation so to get a transition from this pose to the jump and it's very rough if just doing a block out at the moment but I'm just trying to get some poses in with uh, some timing um, and again it's got to be a really quick animation otherwise it's gonna feel really laggy and slow so yeah we're gonna get to work and uh, I'll see how things go all right, so we're coming at the end of Thursday, and I think I'm pretty confident with where all the animations are at the moment. I had my brother come in and have a look at the animations for me and give me his thoughts on them, and we sort of moved some bits around, changed a few poses, and this is the result. So what we've done here with the skate is I've sort of brought the legs in a bit closer together just to look a bit more relaxed. I also did some changes with the walk animation just to make it look a bit more natural. So if I play that now, the uh, there's a bit more movement in the hips. They'll actually move forward and backward as well as up and down. So I think that's where I'm going to leave it for the walk. I reckon it's it's pretty solid. Some other things I worked on was the wall jump. So that's what the full animation looks like right now. And again, it looks a bit weird because the character is stationary, but in game, I think it's going to look much better. But the main changes I've done is on about this frame here, I've really tried to squish her in, exaggerate that anticipation to push herself from the wall. And I think it definitely shows. I think it looks a lot better. I've also like scaled the legs up a bit. Even the knees, I've sort of widened them. I think later in the project, I'm going to come back to refine these a bit. So I may do more with the face and hair then but for now I think it's good enough I'm just gonna spend tomorrow adding those final touches stylizing them then making the video so I'll see you guys tomorrow bright and early
I spent this morning adding some final touches and polish to a few of these animations. Um, so at the moment, I'm just gonna show you guys the walk and you'll start to notice a few things going on, mainly with the hair. I've now added some swaying to it. And if we have a look at the game view, it's gonna look like that from in game from behind. And I wanted to go ahead and add this to the rest as well. And I have added it to the slow skate animation. I do have some hair movement there as well. So if I play that for you, you can see the sort of the hair swaying side to side as she moves her head. And again, it's just small little touches like that. And then once that's all done, I'm gonna go and stylize them. Yep, that's gonna be our goal by the end of today. We'll see how that all goes. Hey guys, sorry I didn't update you all last night. So I started fine tuning a few things and then I had my brother come in and check them for me. We did some improvements on the walk. We moved the hips a bit further forward and we've kind of adjusted her center of gravity. I also spent a lot of time on the run as well, or the skate animation, trying to improve that. And mainly with the arms, because the arms movement didn't feel completely right. There are bits of the animation where the hand is sort of leading the rest of the arm. And then there's bits where the arm is leading and then the hand is following. So that was all very tricky to do, but after a lot of tinkering, I think it's pretty good. But I did go into a few of the other animations like um, the jog, and this one was changed quite a bit. And as you can see, it looks a lot more relaxed than it used to. So what I'm gonna do now is stylize each of these animations. So here are all the keyframes for the walk. I'm gonna go in and press I to key each pose at each frame keyframes and it looks more or less the same but then if we go in to every other frame and delete the keyframe that's there we'll get something like this if we go and look at the curve editor you see the curves on our animation haven't changed they're still very smooth but now that we've got these keyframes here if we select them all and change the interpolation mode from bezier to constant it now will snap the bones to position instead of automatically interpolating between two points and then we get something like this. And as you can see, it looks a lot blockier. If we hide these controllers, you can see that it starts to look uh, traditional. And it starts to look like anime, which is exactly what we want. I'm gonna spend the next hour or so trying to implement this sort of thing in and polish up the rest of the animations. And we'll see how we go. And here is the final result. In under two weeks, we've managed to take this rig and animate it in all sorts of ways. I've just spent the past few hours just sanding off the rough edges and stylizing it. So here's the falling animation I've made, and you can see this one came out pretty nice as well. Just for contrast, I have saved backups of before I've stylized them and after. I've used the suffix stylized. This one here is before I've stylized it, and you can see it looks really smooth and it just kind of looks like a computer animation. But if we go back and change it to jump stylized, you can see it looks a bit more traditional and hand-drawn and intentional. And that's exactly what I was hoping this would look like. And I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And here of course is the slow jog skating. And I think this one, I really liked how this one turned out. This one's really great. So here's the conclusion to our animation journey. It took us under two weeks to get that all done. And what, how many did we do? We did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight animations. Needless to say, I'm a little bit tired from all that, but this was really, really, really fun. I enjoyed it. I may even go in to add more animations later in production if we get to that bit. But for the moment, I think these are gonna work great for the gameplay. Thank you all so much for watching. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, be sure to like the video and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Up next, I'll be taking Gabriella's entire character model, textures, shaders, and animations and importing them into the Unreal Engine. So be sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss it. Thank you to our Patreons for supporting the production of this devlog. With a $1 pledge, you too can have your name featured in the credits and exclusive access to channels on my Discord server. You can make your pledge via my Patreon, linked in the description. And I'd like to thank the artist behind this episode's wonderful Project Feline fan art submissions. If you'd like to have your fan art featured in these videos, be sure to join the community Discord linked in the description. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my followers on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
Throughout the past two weeks, I was posting work in progress screenshots and GIFs on those platforms, and your feedback was really helpful in helping me make these animations. So if you want to see more frequent updates in between videos, you can go ahead and follow me there, links in the description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.